been a while, so we're finally back testing random things from Amazon. Our first item that we're going to be testing is this thing <laughs> called an Ice Magic. The revolutionary space-saving ice cube maker. Squeeze to pop cold cubes. So, this thing is supposed to be some uh, revolutionary, life-changing ice maker. So, this is it. It uh, looks like you... It's got like this centerpiece that comes out. Comes out somehow. Peel the whole thing back. I promise it comes out. There. <laughs> so, this centerpiece comes out. And, uh, well, first of all, you put the centerpiece in. You fill it with water around the outside. And then these, this outside is where the ice gets made. And then pour the, you pull the center out break up the ice cubes, and then dump the ice cubes in here. And then put this back, and then you do it again, and then you keep this full of ice. And then it's got a little lid that's supposed to keep everything secure, and it's supposed to, I guess, save a lot of space or whatever. I don't know. It seems very, very stupid. So I guess you're just supposed to, like, maybe pinch the side of it? And fill it up with water? Okay, I can see on the inside that it's getting full of water. Oh, I think I overfilled it. All right, that looks like it's full of water. What? <laughs> what is it? What's the lid supposed to go onto? There's a lid, like, it just sits there. It doesn't clamp down. It doesn't, it doesn't twist. It literally just sits there. I uh, dumped out half the water. This is, <laughs> this is, this design really honestly kind of sucks. I can already tell. Okay, so I guess we gotta be gentle this lid on here. Okay, now I'm going to gently take this and put it in the freezer. All right, our next item, we have this. <laughs> this is a toaster that makes waffles. Makes two golden brown waffles from scratch in minutes. So sign me up for that. I'm always down for some quick waffles. Let's see what we got here. Instructions. Okay, looks like we got two uh, two waffle molds. Looks like and we got the toaster itself. This pretty much just looks like a normal toaster. It honestly looks just like the the toaster that they used for the because this is the same company that made the toaster that makes the grilled cheeses, and this looks just like the exact same one, just with a different uh, different sticker. So you have these, I'm assuming these things are silicone. What are these just like snap together? It's like a Ziploc bag kind of. It's got these little handles on it. And you just drop it down in here. I need those instructions. I wonder if they recommend that you grease the inside of these so it doesn't stick or what. Well, they do not say anything about using oil or anything in the molds. So it does say to preheat the, to preheat the thing though, so. So the toaster has a preheat button. I don't know if that does anything. I think I had this problem with the last one. It literally says to push the preheat button, but nothing happens. Yeah, it shows the preheat button. Nothing happens. Defrost. Nothing. I mean, we can preheat it this way. We can just let it run through a cycle. Yeah, maybe we should let it do that. It's got a weird smell to it. Burn all the chemicals and stuff out of there. <laughs> that thing smells rough. This thing smells like it's been some places. It's odd that typically, I think I just saw some smoke, but it's odd that typically in a toaster, you know, whenever you look inside, you can see the elements red hot, but this one, you can't. They're just kind of, I can feel they're warm, but they're not, uh, I don't think this toaster gets as hot as a regular toaster. It stinks, I can tell you that. That is, uh, it's not very encouraging. Yeah, the longer this thing sits here, the more it stinks. I think I'm gonna run this thing uh, through a couple cycles. I'm gonna get, like, burn off all of whatever's going on in there. All right, so before we go any farther, this video is sponsored by Manscaped. Manscaped has sent me their new 
Shears 2.0 nail kit along with the Performance Package 4.0. So first let's take a look at this nail kit. It comes in a very nice leather package and it's just a simple nail kit. You have a nail file, you have a nice little pair of scissors, you have a nice uh, little pair of nail clippers, and you have a set of tweezers. So pretty much everything you need, throw that in a little toiletry bag and you're good to go. So now let's check out the Performance Package 4.0. First thing you get you get the Lawnmower 4.0. This is a waterproof cordless trimmer. It has skin safe technology, so you're not gonna cut or nick yourself. It also has a nice little LED light so you can see what you're trimming. And it also has a 90 minute battery life. It also comes with this handy little stand that acts as a wireless charger. So you get that. You also get, with that, you get two different guards so that you can trim at two different lengths. Those are very nice. And then you also get a bottle of ball toner and you also get a bottle of ball deodorant. And now for a limited time, whenever you buy the Performance Package 4.0, you get a free, you get two free gifts. You get a free pair of anti-chafing boxer briefs and then you also get a nice leather toiletry bag. So it's very nice. So if you want to check out the Performance Package 4.0 or if you want to check out the Shears 2.0 nail kit or if maybe you just want to try a new cologne or maybe you need a new ear and nose hair trimmer or maybe you just need a regular, uh, a new razor. You can click the link in the top of my description, and if you use code TUBE at checkout, you'll get 20% off your order plus free shipping. All right, this thing should be plenty warm by now. I ran it through like two or three cycles. So we're gonna go ahead, put that back in there. Make sure these things are, I really, I really don't want these things leaking uh, waffle batter all down the inside of the toaster. Something tells me these things are, I don't like these things. Oh, we're, uh, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a mess. Maybe we can do it a spoonful at a time. Well, it seems to be working. Although this is so slow at this pace, I'd almost rather just dump all this into a pan and just make a giant pancake and be done. Let's make sure this thing's not leaking. This actually might be a half decent waffle. Let's go ahead and start filling up this one. Let's check for leaks. Woo! No leaks. All right, we're gonna put it on setting four. That seems to be kind of like a middle of the road setting. Let's see what happens. I can instantly smell <clears throat> burning, although I think that might just be some of the batter that I kind of dropped on the outside. I can't imagine the waffle itself will be burning already. Okay, so it looks like, I wonder if I can sneak some more in there. This one looks like it's about to overflow, but this one like, it's like sunk down into the bottom. This is probably a bad idea. And it's probably gonna make it not cook all the way. This one's good, this is gonna overflow. 100%. Uh, let's see if we can scoop some of this out. <laughs> we do not want this to overflow. Okay. There is no way that that's done. Not even close. Yeah, that's not even, not even close to being done. Ow, that's hot. That just came out of a toaster, what would you expect? This one I don't think is gonna end up being very good. Oh. Let's put it down for another cycle. This one, if th this one looked like it was about half done, if this one's half done, this one, I mean, this one might have to go through a third time. Well, it's, I don't know if you can hear it, it's screaming. Hurry up. I would like a waffle. I'm too impatient for this. Pop. Now. 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 Come on. There you go. All right. Where'd that come from? Did I dump that on the table? All right, let's go let's pull this one out first. See how impressive or unimpressive this is. I forgot that these waffles are supposed to sit inside of their molds for 30 seconds, they say. Oh, well, that's hot. I don't think these are gonna be done. That, that one still felt squishy. All right, it's probably been about 30 seconds. See what we got. <laughs> okay, sort of resembles a waffle. Oh, it comes out of the mold nice. 
Okay, so <laughs> we clearly did not get enough batter into this one. Let's see how this one turned out. Now this one definitely had to have had enough batter. Oh, oh, look at that. Ow, it's hot. Come on, ow. Get out of there. Look at that. That's a nice waffle. Put it in there just a little bit more so you get, you know, get a little bit more brown. But, I mean, that's, that's cooked. This one was obviously cooked all the way through. Get some good old maple syrup. Let's have ourselves the, the full experience here. Tastes just like a regular waffle. As long as you put the right, <laughs> as long as you put a put the right amount of batter inside the uh, little silicone molds here, it actually it comes out good. It doesn't stick to the mold, which is nice. That'll be nice for cleanup. Waffle toaster. I like it. All right, so let's see um, how hard it's going to be to clean these things up. I would love if I could just peel all this off with my hand. Ooh. <laughs> I think that's what we're going to be able to do. Oh, look at that. Everything just peels right off. That is going to make cleaning super convenient. I was really worried about this stuff getting, like, all stuck in here. Because I've never, I've never done anything with these, like, silicone molds. Because, obviously, I don't cook. So I didn't know if it would, like, stick to this real bad or not. That's awesome. It all just literally just falls right off. Just falls apart. All right. So that's nice and easy. I'm going to mix up another another batch of batter. And I'm going to make it just a little bit thinner. Because I want to get uh, two, you know, two really good waffles out of it. Let's try that. See if maybe a thinner batter. Because that last batter, I mixed it, you know, according to what the box said to mix it at. Which is a little bit thicker. So I think if we mix it just a little bit thinner, I think we'll be in good shape. So you can see that I... I've made this one, this batch, much more liquidy. So this should help it slide into all the little crevices. So let's, we had to do two cycles last time on four. So let's just go ahead, crank it all the way up. Make sure those are in there. All right, we're just gonna do one cycle. I don't understand what's going on here. This is literally the exact same thing that happened last time. This time, this one was 100% filled up just as much as this one, and this one is overflowing, and this one has sunk down, and it's gonna be extremely low, just like last time. It's all leaked out of the bottom again. It's, it's all leaked out of the bottom. And there, there was a little puddle there last time. I bet it leaked out of the bottom last time, too. It's overflowing, what do I do? Um, okay, I'm just gonna leave it. It's just gonna make a mess. I wonder if there's something like faulty with this like that specific mold or something. Because I definitely closed it to begin with, and then when I was filling it up, it the batter drained out of the bottom. And then I closed it, you saw me close it again, put it back in, and then now it's, all the batter drained out of the bottom of it again. Ooh, something's burning. I can't imagine it'd be the all the batter that's overflowing inside of the toaster. <laughs> now you spring up. No, we're supposed to let it sit for 30 seconds. Let's let it sit. Clean up three quarters of our batter that leaked out of the bottom. Right, let's go for this one first. <laughs> this thing, there's, there's basically nothing left. It's just a, a skin of a waffle. And that's it. Where it has the, ooh, it's hot. Ow. Don't touch that. Where it has those grooves at the bottom and it was leaking. And then whenever I closed it again, I closed that batter in there. And then the batter probably expanded whenever it cooked with the heat and then it opened it up and let the rest leak out. It's probably what I would say. But it shouldn't have leaked in the first place. Let's see if we got anything better to offer over here. Ooh. Mmm. These things are hot. Ooh. Mm. You should probably let this cool off. Come on, get out of there. We got at least one good waffle again. I should have just walked away after that first go around and just said, oh, you know, I just didn't put enough batter in that second one. But other than that, it works good. And then just, and then just walked away. But I had to come back for more. And this thing, I was gonna say that this thing's actually really good. 
I'm going to retract that and say that has the potential to be decent. I just feel like it's like just prone to too many like accidents and too many problems to really be worth it. You'd be better off just going to Walmart and get a whatever it is, $5 waffle iron as opposed to this I think this thing was like $30. I mean, you were way better off with a waffle iron. So I would go that route versus this because this is not really gonna be any faster. It's definitely not gonna be less mess and it's gonna be nowhere near as consistent. Cool kind of novelty thing that kind of works, but as far as like a first option for a waffle maker, this is not it. All right, so our ice maker is now frozen. So let's try to Harvest the ice. Harvest? Is that the right word? Um, the lid, obviously, no matter what, it just sits there. I guess the lid is just below us. <laughs> we don't need the lid that bad anyway. So I think you're supposed to get the cup out of here. That was surprisingly easy. Okay. And then, squeeze this around. And you put that in there and then you put the cup back in here then you'd fill it up again and then you'd let it freeze again and then do it again that actually worked way better than i expected that cup is so much easier to get out of there whenever it's frozen i guess the i guess the rubber is not gripping it anymore so i mean as far as the ice is concerned um it makes ice uh the kind of ice that it makes uh, sucks, and I would imagine that where it's so small, it would probably just melt super fast, so that kind of sucks. I mean, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. It makes ice, it has the container, it is easy to pull apart, it breaks open, and does everything it's supposed to. The only thing is the lid doesn't, like, clamp down. Uh, I don't really like it. I think the ice that it makes kind of sucks. I don't know. I just, I just personally don't like it. Maybe if you like this type of ice, it would be good. All right, our next item is a thing it call it is a is a fixate gel pad. This is a reusable sticky pad. Now, in the commercial, they show this like putting this next to a door and having it hold up keys, and then they show it. I think stick it on a wall, like in a, on a mirror, holding a phone, and just like different uh, situations like that. This is supposed to be just a double-sided sticky pad to. I guess just hold things wherever you need them held. I have this little rig here that I made. We're gonna use just a piece of uh, plexiglass and we're gonna see what these things can hold. Oh, this this seems, uh, the purpose of this is to like put it somewhere and then have it hold things and then, you know, be able to take those things off. This feels extremely sticky. Like not something that would you, that would be reusable. Put that there and just make sure this is all stuck on here and we can peel that off. I'm going to save these because this also claims to be uh, washable, like washable and reusable. So we'll see about that. First thing they claim is that it can hold a phone. So actually let's go this way. I mean it's holding it pretty, uh, pretty secure. That's, that's stuck on there pretty good. There's no residue or anything. I would imagine that'll hold something for quite a long time. I mean. Okay, now it comes off. So you can see, I mean, that's that was stuck pretty good. And I bet if we go this way. <laughs> my phone came out of the case so the the, <laughs> the case failed before the uh... that's funny I would not have expected that so I think that uh, I think that can speak to uh, how how sticky this is and they say that you can just yeah you can just twist it take it off so I've got like just a pair of wireless headphones here 
Got some keys. And I got just a pocket knife. Oh. I don't think it likes the texture of the pocket knife. Oh. <laughs> it really... So I guess it doesn't like textures. All those keys are... Those keys are actually stuck pretty good. And so are the, the headphones. I guess this is only going to be good with things that don't have a texture. You can kind of hear it's got kind of like a checkered, checkerboard type texture. I wouldn't think that would make that much of a difference. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't stick at all. It falls off before I even get a chance to touch it. That key was stuck pretty good. And that was stuck pretty good. Let's try this again on... That part of the pad seems to be pretty sticky. Maybe there was some dirt or something on it. Okay. Stuck to the... The plexiglass pretty good. That's another thing this, claim, this thing claims is multi-surface. So it doesn't seem that that is gonna, going to be true. Seems like it's only gonna be smooth surface. Alright, where else can we stick this? Let's try on some wood. Why not? Let's see if it sticks. Come on. Huh. Maybe. Let's put these right here. I mean, that's pretty secure. And now we've got some wood particles. I'm impressed with that, to be honest. E. Oh, it looks like it's fallen. Oh, here it goes. Oh, the phone. <laughs> the phone's fallen. Oh. Okay, so maybe wood isn't the best. Let me wash this off and let it dry, and we'll try the wood again on like a on a fresh surface. So I got this thing washed up here, and honestly. This is one of the, the things, most of these like uh, sticky things that are like labeled as, or uh, advertised to be like reusable, you know, like you just wash them and it's supposed to be just like brand new. Most of those things are pretty much trash and they, like they usually have half the stickiness that they had at the beginning. But this one really feels like it, I mean, honestly, it feels like it was restored back to completely new. It feels just as sticky as it was to begin with. Still don't know if it's gonna be good enough to stick to the wood. Put that there. Let's just sit here for a minute, see if it's gonna hold. It acts like it's going to. Oh, that's actually, that's actually really tight. Oh, look at that. I can move the whole, move the whole thing with it. Oh, so I mean that actually sticks to the wood pretty good with, you know, that sticks to it a lot. And of course now we have the, like the wood chips on the back of it. So, so far it seems like this thing is actually going to be pretty good. I want to find a textured surface. I want to wash this off again and I want to put this on a textured surface and see, see how it works with that. So this is the door we're going to use. You can see it has this texture right here. And I'm using my phone to record, so I'm going to be using, uh, my old phone, and it has this textured backing, so this, uh, or case, not backing. So this is gonna be kind of a double whammy, I guess. So let's put that on there. Definitely feels sticky, for sure. Push that on there nice and tight. Oh, wow. Oh, that is on there. So that feels like that is, uh, <laughs> I mean, that is, that is on there, on there. So I'm gonna just let this sit here and uh, we'll wait like an hour or two hours maybe and we'll see if it holds on. So the Fixate gel pads not, on, not only have 
the uh, pad that you just saw that you know you stick stick things to things with. It has this, which is like a, it's supposed to be like a phone holder, it says, but for some reason it's wrapped in plastic and sticky on both sides, just like the other one. Um, maybe it's sticky so it doesn't move or something, but the way they show it is they show it like this, and you fold this like that, and you're supposed to be able to put your phone there and have it hold your phone up. I mean, it's working. Although it looks like it's about to fall over. I think that's actually more sturdy than what I thought. I'm kind of impressed. I thought this thing would have just collapsed already. Maybe if you had your phone this way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not quite. Let me wash this and then uh, then we'll see if maybe it works then. So now that this is washed off, I don't know. I don't know why I didn't think of this to begin with, but I'm just gonna set that plexiglass down there. Make sure it's nice and clean, because obviously this thing is not gonna stick that good to a wood tabletop that has two years of <laughs> like dust and dirt and stuff on it. Let's just fix this like that. Yeah. Look at that. I mean, that sticks better than I would have expected. Look at that. You can hold it upside down. So it seems like the, the weak link of this is going to be this flap that's supposed to just like sit right there. But I mean, honestly, as long as you just lit it, as long as it just sits there, I mean, I think it would hold on for a long time. And the stickiness definitely stays. It doesn't leave a residue, which is nice. Oh. Oh, wow. Ugh. Jeez. This is, this is one of the only products that I've ever tested that, that is sticky, that claims to be reusable, that once you wash it, it actually like, is restored back to the original stickiness. Every single other thing that I've tried, nano tape, alien tape, and I think there's been a couple others, the second you wash it, all the stickiness is reduced by like 70%. But this, and this has only been washed once, but it still has plenty of stick, and even me just handling it still, I mean, I like this stuff. This, these gel pads, whatever they're, whatever material they're using here, it has these three little sections that bend like this, but you can also bend each individual, each individual section. You can bend that down a little bit, make it even more secure. This is, I don't know, there's something, whatever they're using here, this is some good stuff. So let's go check on that one that's hanging on the door. All right, so this phone has been sitting here for right about two hours now. So let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, it is still very much. Uh, no residue. Definitely wasn't stuck as strong as it was you know when i first put it on there but i mean that was not coming off anytime soon that probably would have taken days to fall off so i don't know how much more you could ask from that this, this is good stuff so you guys are going to love this next thing because last time i brought this microwave out you guys complained about how dirty it was even though it's not like crazy dirty just a little bit dirty. So what we have is this thing called an Angry Mama. It's this little device and you fill it full of vinegar and water and then you put it inside the microwave and it steams up out of the top and then I guess the vinegar water steam mixture is supposed to like loosen up everything inside the microwave and make it to where you can just take a, a paper towel and just wipe everything right off we'll see if that's the case Let's see what the directions say <laughs> twisting counter clock whiss not wise w-i-s-s -S, to remove the angry mama's hair pour vinegar water to markings blah, blah blah microwave for five to eight minutes on high setting then about two minutes the steam will blast out if the <laughs> if the steam not too much you can microwave more minutes but don't too long or angry mama 
May burned. I think we get it. So we pull this off, and it's got markings on the on the back. It has the markings, but I really think it's just half vinegar, half water, just from from looking at it. I feel like we should kind of maybe mix around a little bit. Let's go six, because we don't, because it said it may burned, and we don't want to may burned it. So we'll go six. Alright, it, it smells really bad in here. Like it just smells like straight from vinegar. Ugh. Everything looks pretty steamy. Ugh, there's still a good amount of that left. Might as well go ahead and use it all up. Go, go in another two minutes. Oh, let's see what we got. Oh, that's about perfect. We have just a... I probably should have checked to see if that was hot before I just... Mmm! There's still steam coming out of it. A little tiny bit. <coughs> oh, man! It's like, it doesn't even smell just like vinegar. It's like a... I don't even... It's like a like a bad vinegar smell. Like a burnt vinegar smell or something. Maybe some of it's because of the, uh... I don't know. Maybe it's the stuff that's being cooked inside the microwave? Alright, I've brought you in for a closer look. I think we're gonna try to go for some of that, maybe some of that, just regular paper towels. Actually, you know what? Let's go for this first. Let's see what we can get here. Well, I guess that plate must have been pretty clean. What can we get down here? Oh. Oh, ew. I think that really did loosen up a bunch of stuff. Cause I tried I tried to clean this out once before. And it was all like let's try this over here. Oh. That stuff over there is a little a little dried on. Let this right here. Oh, that's dried on too. This stuff down here though. It's probably like a new microwave. Whenever I get done. Now I kind of had a secondary product that I wanted to try out. Miracle wipes for cook stoves. It says it removes grease and grime. Let's try some of this stuff right here. It's a little more. Oh wow. Wow, you can see there. Let's try right here. Oh look at that. That just takes it right off. That is incredible. Let's look at this stuff over here. It's like a brand new microwave. Now, let's see what we can do with this plate. That might take just a little bit more elbow grease and it all comes off of there. And there we go. Nice clean plate. Uh, microwave still has a, a little few spots here and there that I don't really care about, but overall it's clean and it's good enough for a town this size. Our last item. I bought this last item for one reason and one reason only. This is called the Egg Sitter. And this is like a gel honeycomb uh, seat cushion type thing. And they claim that you can put an egg, one egg, on the seat, sit on it, and the cushion is like so soft or good or whatever that you can sit on this egg and the egg will not break, is what they claim. I don't believe that and I won't believe it until I see it. But before we do that, uh, I'll just go ahead and give you a, a quick little review of this seat, even though I didn't really buy it to review it. I just bought it to see if I could sit on the egg and see if it would break. Actually, it's using this thing uh, in my office chair for like, about two weeks now or so. It's like a jelly, uh, it's real, you know, floppy. Just like a jelly honeycomb type consistency. Um, but I've been using this for about about two weeks now. And as a seat cushion, honestly, this thing is great. It's super soft. You never, I never feel like, I guess where it's gel, I never feel like it's getting like matted down, I guess. Like how a normal seat cushion, after you sit on it for long enough, it kind of gets like a low spot or a flat spot or something. I don't get that at all with this. Um, and it's actually really comfortable. So as a seat cushion, it's great, but that's not really 
what I care about. I care to see if I can sit on an egg and not break it. All right, moment of truth. I think I'm gonna go on the left side. Put that egg right there. I never thought in a million years I'd be sitting on an egg. Oh. All right. It didn't break. It literally didn't break. This thing actually works. Because I could kind of feel it touching the chair. So, actually, you know what? I think if we moved it a little bit inwards, I bet it would break. I think it's, I think, I think it'll be fine as long as you keep it on this, like, fat back part. But if you move it up here a little bit thinner, I think it might break. It still, it still didn't break. No way. Maybe right there? I can literally feel, like, I'm, I'm putting a lot of weight on it. Like, I can literally feel it, like, between me and the chair. Okay, let's go back to our original position right there. This is going to be stupid. What if we kind of, what if, instead of we, what if, instead of, like, gently sitting down, what if we just kind of fall back? It didn't break. Although I did kind of hit the back of the chair. What if we just kind of... It still didn't break. It still, it still didn't break. How is this possible? Alright, I'm gonna like fall on it, but like, I'm gonna try to get like all my weight on my left side whenever I fall. Still nothing. Not even cracked. I mean, aside from like jumping and like hurting myself. Nothing. 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 I'm, <laughs> I'm really amazed. I mean, maybe let's go to the right side. I doubt that'll do anything. No. <sighs> what if I kind of like slam down? <sighs> oh, oh, that time it did it. Oh, I got egg on me. I don't know, I don't know what was different that time. Other than it was like the 50th time that I had done it, oh, it's soaking through my shorts, and now my leg is cold. I, don't know, I completely lost my train of thought. This just feels so weird. You can sit on it with an egg. I mean, I slammed down on it, what, four or five times? Sat on it normal four or five times? I mean, it's it took a lot for it to break, and I really had to slam down on it. And I would say that that one probably only broke because I had been slamming on it so many times. But that seat cushion is good. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.